Hi guys, welcome back. This is a knife I've been wanting to review ever since I saw it at Iwa. I did a breakdown on the Benchmade booth on all the new stuff they had coming out. It's the first Benchmade I've ever owned. I now own three. That tells you that I really like this one. And uh, yeah, I absolutely fell in love with the look of it. Uh, I got my hands on it at that show and I just couldn't believe what a cool little knife it was. Little being the operative word, I think that's one of the things I've heard people comment on in a kind of negative way on some of the other reviews I've seen. And, you know, you know what you're getting into when you buy this knife. It's pretty obvious it's going to be a small form factor. And if that's what you're looking for, then this really is a cool little thing. If you're looking for a big tactical blade, then you're going to be disappointed. This isn't that. It's certainly got a tactical vibe to it, but the key word is, you know, it's a small knife. I really like small knives at the moment. I actually find them very useful. You know, I don't always want to carry a huge folder. If I need a really big knife, I'll carry a fixed blade. And these ones are really useful for me at work when I'm kind of doing, you know, cutting up of materials and stuff like that. I just need something small with a really good sharp blade and a nice point. And this ticks all the boxes and it looks awesome. It's got an awesome little backstory to it as well. So what are we talking about? Of course, you probably know from the thumbnail already, we're talking about the immunity. So there you go. That's what I mean by small. You can see it up next to my hand there. It's literally a palm width across. And it's in a beautiful color. They come in three different colors. Woodland green, which is my favorite. This one. A dark earth, which is a, a kind of brownie bronze. And then what they call crater blue, which is actually my second favorite, which is a really pretty kind of bluey purpley color they catch the light really really well really really nicely made so that's what first attracted me now these knives are called the immunity and they're actually a series uh, if you're lucky enough to live in a country that doesn't heavily regulate knives you've got a choice of three iterations so you've got the full auto immunity funny title thanks bench made for that and that is obviously an automatic knife in england they're not allowed that's what they would call flick knife or a switchblade type knife uh, but in certain u.s states you can certainly have them and there's other countries in the world that you can as well so the auto immunity basically mimics this knife except it's an automatic and it has all the same features you know same blade material etc now, they also do a partial autoimmunity, and I believe that's based on the California market, which has some very specific laws. The sort of leftists over there have, have regulated things a bit harder, and they have shortened the blade length. So these are a 2.5, the same with the auto, or 2.49 inches to be exact. And then the partial, which is a assisted opening knife, is 1.9 inch blade length so i don't know a huge amount about us law for knives i'm guessing the fact that being an assisted opener rather than a full auto and the fact that the blade is sub two inches somehow allows it to be okay in california and maybe some other states that have regulated like that i'm not an expert so if you're american guys leave a comment down below and you can educate us all but in short they all look pretty much the same apart from that assisted opener being a slightly shorter blade length but they are in effect all the same knife with slightly different opening style so they have thumb studs for opening as you can see there's no flipper on there so we won't be getting the the customs confiscating this and just for a heads up guys i did get some bench made sent over to me in the uk from the us I didn't have any problems like I did with my flipper knife. They all came through in the post, no problem at all. They were correctly labeled up by Benchmade. There were some rumors that I had actually mentioned in a video previously that people had been asking Benchmade to tighten up the pivots so that the blades didn't deploy quickly. I asked Benchmade about that. They were very honest and they said, no, they've never done that for anyone. There was no need and they were very confident they've never had any issues with shipping their stuff 
over here because most of it is thumb stud. They're not a, a particularly flipper heavy company. So as you can see, thumb stud opening. And then you've got that beautiful Warncliffe type blade on there with a very, very fine and sharp point, which is excellent for detail work. Now, a really cool thing about this knife is if we can get close enough the pivot stud there is actually the covid molecule and uh i thought that was a, a nice little touch and this was designed benchmade told me during the lockdown period so it's that's what the influence was from you know the whole immunity autoimmunity etc was all influenced by the, the COVID lockdown, etc. They come as standard with the lanyard and bead, which is a nice little touch. And of course, when you're gripping the knife, that allows you to kind of grip on the back finger just towards that bead and, and it gives you a really secure hold. It's actually really nice in the hand. You can see the shape of the handle there is really nicely scalloped. So it's very, very comfortable. You've got some jimping up on the top of the blade to rest your thumb. An incredibly comfortable knife to hold. And I just want to say it's beautifully made. You know, the detail on that handle is really something to behold. If you ever wonder why Benchmade knives cost a little bit more and you kind of have been one of the people in a comment section that slagged Benchmade off and said, Oh, I would never pay that much for a knife. These are around the 270 mark at Blade HQ at the moment, at the time of this review. So they're not cheap. If you get them in England, I think Heine have got these at the moment, Heine Haynes, and they're retailing about £250. So, you know, that's not a cheap knife by any means. I understand that. But you really, really do see where that money's gone. The aluminium scales on there, really, really nicely crafted. And then it's lined inside with some skeletonized, what look like steel liners. So it's really, really sturdy, but still maintaining a light weight. It's only weighing in at about 70 grams. So super light little knife. And of course the axis lock, which is simply pulled back to close the blade. Now you can flick these open. It does take a little bit of practice to the flick them open really well because the blade is kind of rearward heavy. You know, the, the weight has been taken out of the, the front end because of that um, tapered point and it's a small blade, it's quite short. So it doesn't have a lot of inertia when you flick it out. So you actually have to push the thumb stud kind of towards the front, you know, and it'll, it'll flick out quite nicely. And then you just pull that back and the blade will drop shut. It was a tiny bit stiffer than this when I first got it. So I sat there with the flicking it in and out and kind of letting it up and down. Um, I did put a bit of decent knife oil in there, sort of cleaned it out a bit and put a bit of decent stuff in there just to smooth things over and eventually you know, after about 50 flicks, it's a lot smoother than it was. And that's pretty much the same with any of these types of knives. You know, they're never going to be ultra smooth as soon as you get them. Maybe if you spent like um, £1,200 on some sort of custom Sebenza or something. But, you know, that's pretty damn good. And it will only get better. That Warncliffe blade is M4 steel, which is incredibly resilient and can be sharpened with relative ease but holds a really really good edge and it will hold that edge over a good amount of time as well and this came absolutely razor sharp you know it it, it was as sharp as it looks because that as soon as you see that blade you're like yeah that is a, a sharp blade uh, demonstrate on the arm you can see it's just slicing hair off of there with ease and some skin as well but it's certainly 
does the the job in terms of sharpness it's got a cobalt black coating which is actually pretty hard wearing you know sometimes you can use a blade and cut through some things and it kind of straight away marks up the coating i've used that on a, on a few bits and pieces cutting through leather straps and various different bits cable ties and such and there's no obvious markings to that yet flat grind so nice and simple to sharpen nothing unusual there and then we've got a pocket clip at the back which is pretty reasonably deep carry it's not not the absolute deepest it could be but you certainly don't get much poking out the pocket uh, fit and finish is awesome and it's a good pocket clip in that it it's not pressing your trouser material so hard against this kind of knurled edge that it's ripping up your trousers and actually that knurled edge on there isn't particularly abrasive it's enough to get some grip on it but it's not unpleasant you know you don't need to be wearing gloves and it's not ripping up your trousers every time you pull it in and out the centering on that is of course excellent as you would expect for a knife of this price and it's just a thing of great beauty it makes an awesome little crafting blade or a general utility knife for work just because of that blade shape you know it's really really good at that tip down stuff if you want to score out some card or like i was scoring out some pieces of leather it is an excellent excellent blade for that it's exactly what it's made for and most importantly it looks just epic it's also quite nice to have a little bit of a memento to remind you that you lived through the the great lockdown and survived to get out the other side that's a, a little bit ironic now we can all look back and realize maybe it wasn't quite as dangerous as the government made out but it's a pretty cool reminder and i just love that that covid molecule on there that really tickles me pocket clip can be mounted on the other side if you want to carry left-handed I do carry left-handed, but I never, ever change the pocket clips. I put the blade in my pocket, in my left side, like so, and then I'm just pulling it out and holding it like that. So I just don't need to modify that in any way. I'm quite happy with it. So I've got nothing bad to say about this at all. Super comfortable. Looks incredibly cool. I love the action on it. It's a fidgety little thing you know like i said once you've worn it in slightly i'm not normally a big lanyard fan but i even like the lanyard on it and actually that can be quite an assistance when dragging it out of your pocket as well you're not going to have any legal issues because of those thumb studs which i'll talk about in another video why thumb studs are perfectly fine in the uk compared to flipper tabs etc the bottom line is they're all fine someone from the home office came out and said that they particularly thought thumb studs were absolutely okay and they didn't make a comment on any of the other uh, common sort of ways of deploying a knife blade so a lot of manufacturers have moved over to thumb studs for the uk market and places like Heine tend to only be stocking uh, any sort of one-handed deploy knives as thumb stud versions so we're probably going to see more and more of those just based on this uh, home office recommendation which was quite bizarre they then went to talk about you know speed of opening and stuff which a thumb stud can be just as fast as a flipper mech we all know that the same as a spidey hole whatever else it makes no odds whatsoever they're all the bloody same so i don't know why she even said that again it's a case of people making laws and talking about laws when they have absolutely no understanding of the, the item in question or the methods it can be deployed by or the fact that banning that item or things around that item won't do anything to actually defeat the problem that exists in the first place which is youths being incredibly violent so do i recommend this yes absolutely i would not be without it now i absolutely love it it's beautiful to look at beautiful to own it is a pleasure to hold and use it looks fantastic 
it feels great it is my introduction to Benchmade, which I am very, very impressed with. I can see why people become kind of Benchmade fanatics just because it's such high quality. That's exactly what I like when you spend the extra bit of money on something and you get it in your hand and straight away you can see the quality you're buying into. I appreciate that. If it had come, you know, with faults and issues and um the machining quality wasn't quite there i would be seriously disappointed if i was just paying that much and you, all you got was the brand name you know, i'm not a big fan of paying money for brand names but i am a big fan of paying money for something that is very very high quality and a pleasure to own so check it out guys i'll chuck a couple of links up um, I don't think you can get these on Amazon. Maybe you can. If I can find that, I'll chuck a link. If you can buy things on my Amazon links, I always appreciate it. It donates a few pence to the, the channel every time you do that. So, you know, really, thank you very much. If you can like and subscribe, that also helps me massively. You know, we get a lot of people that view and don't subscribe. It costs you nothing and it means the world to me. I'm eternally grateful to everyone that subscribed. And I'll also chuck links up from Heine Haynes and from probably Blade HQ for my American friends and maybe Eva Lamnia for the EU guys that are watching as well. Those seem to be the, the people that are watching the channel now in those kind of regions. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks if you subscribed. Please do subscribe and uh, use the links if you can. Take care, guys. Great to see you. And I'll talk to you all next time.